all, welcome back to our discussion about the attributes of the graphs of polynomial functions. And in this video, we are really going to be talking about, well, it's an attribute of the graph. It's really a transition. It's a segue into solving polynomial equations. So it kind of fits in both this video and the next video. Um, so this is a good preparation and it does apply to the graph for sure. So we are going to talk today about the rational zero theorem. And the rational zero theorem states that if a polynomial has any rational zeros, they will be in the form of p divided by q. Now why we use p and q, I'm not really sure, but p will represent a factor of the constant that is in the polynomial, and q will be a factor of the leading coefficient. Okay, so now let's, let's kind of pull this statement apart. If a polynomial has a rational zero, okay, if means there may or may not be one, okay? And what does it mean to have a rational zero? Okay, well, what does it mean to have a zero? Let's go there. A zero is nothing more than an x-intercept, okay? Okay, so what does it mean to be a rational zero? We use rational in a lot of different ways. Like, we can talk about it as being level-headed, right? Um, you know, let's be rational about this. But when we're talking about it in math, it just means that we can express a value as the ratio of two integers. So it's, it's, a, it's a number that can be expressed as a fraction, okay? So if a polynomial has a rational zero, it will be in this form. Now, can a polynomial have zeros that are not rational? Well, yes, you could have zeros at like one plus the square root of three, one minus the square root of three. So what this is saying is, if there exists a rational zero for a specific polynomial, it will present in this form. And, and that's all it really says. So it doesn't guarantee there's a zero, it doesn't guarantee there's a rational zero, but if there is one, it will be in this form. So let's look at an example. Let's list all the possible rational zeros of the function f of x is equal to 3x to the fourth minus 11x cubed minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8. Okay, so notice this is saying list all the possible rational zeros, so all the possibilities. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this theorem and use it to express every single possibility. We're not saying that the possibilities are zeros. We're saying these are what they could possibly be, all right? We're going to use that p over q idea where p is a factor of the constant. And in this case, the constant is the value 8. And q is a factor of the leading coefficient. And the leading coefficient here is 3. So we're looking at the factors of 8 divided by the factors of 3. So we're going to want to list the factors of 8. It always makes sense to kind of start and do this systematically so we don't miss something. So I always just start with 1. Um, 1 is a factor of 8. 2 is a factor of 8. 3 is not a factor of 8. But 4 is a factor of 8, and it matches with the 2, which means I just need the match for the 1. So 1, 2, 4, and 8 are my factors. Now the factors of 3, since 3 is prime, are just 1 and 3. Okay, so here are my factors. Oh, but wait. Is negative 1 a factor of 8 or 3? Can I multiply negative 1 by something and get positive 3? Yeah, I can multiply negative 1 by negative 3 and get positive 3. So for each of these, we're going to make sure that we include the positive and negative versions of those values. Okay, so we've done the hard work. Now all we do is actually list them out. So the way we would list them out is we're going to focus on the, the first 
value in our denominator, okay? So we're gonna look at that one. And now we're going to list everything that's in the numerator divided by one. So one over one, two over one, four over one, and eight over one. And we're gonna list those as positive and negative. So plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, and plus or minus eight. Now we're going to think about all those values in the numerator over the second value in the denominator. So we're gonna add some more options here, plus or minus one over three, plus or minus two over three, plus or minus four over three, and plus or minus eight over three, okay? And that's how you use a rational zero theorem. Now, it doesn't look all that useful, but it will be when we start actually solving polynomial equations. And that is what happens next. So I will see you there, and I hope you have a great day.